Hello everyone and welcome back to Liquid Evil Gaming once again. So a common thread that you constantly see come up on plenty of keyboard forums or websites when it comes to Topra keyboards is one of the following two things. One is always 45 gram versus 55 gram switches and which should you get and why. Well, as it stands right now, the only way you can get 55 gram switches short of some crazy mods and things of that sort is in the 55 gram 87U Real Force board, which I have right here. Uh, 45 gram switches you can get in several varieties, of course. You can get them on the Happy Hacking keyboard. You can get them on the Leopold FC660. You can also get them on the Real Force boards as well. Um, but when it comes to 55, short of you taking a donor board and ripping all the uh, domes out and putting them in another board. This is the only stock 55 gram Topre keyboard in the market that I am aware of. So usually these are two of the boards that people compare a lot. Which also goes into the second thread you will see a lot on keyboard forums, which is the Happy Hacking Professional 2 versus the Realforce 87U. Now. Since I have both of these boards and my real force happens to be 55 gram, I'm going to attempt to answer these questions, at least my own personal subjective opinion, because that's when it comes down to it's all going to be opinion. There is no right or wrong answer. There is no solid facts. It's all a matter of personal opinion and personal preference. So I can only give you mine. Your mileage may vary. But I'm hoping this may help some of you out there who are considering buying one of these boards because not everybody can buy both and they are a bit of a lofty purchase. So, starting with the Realforce 87U, both commenting on the board itself and the switches. The 55 gram switches truly emphasize everything about Topre. They have a bit of a louder thock because uh, they are a snappier and heavier switch. Um, you do have to be quite a bit more deliberate in your key presses. If you're somebody that frequently enjoys Cherry MX Clears or Cherry MX Greens or Buckling Springs or heavier switches of that nature, this is probably going to be right up your alley uh, because you really do have to be very deliberate with your key presses and they do take a decent amount of effort to push each key down. Now. I myself am coming from preferring Cherry MX Brown, so I typically like a lighter switch. Now, for stuff like gaming or light bursts of typing, I love this board. It's fantastic. Um, I do wholly, without a doubt, prefer, prefer the feel of the 55 gram switch. That said, I am used to a lighter switch. I also have carpal tunnel and tendonitis. And for a living, I'm a scratch baker, so I use my hands and arms all day, so when I come home, my hands and arms and fingers are usually beat. So for anything long-term use, we'll say over an hour with this, I can definitely feel my fingers and hands and arms getting fatigued, and even to a lesser degree, a little bit of pain, but that's more due to the conditions I have. So for short bursts of use, I do definitely like this board, but for long term, it simply is not comfortable or practical for me with the heavier switch weight. Now that said, unless the heavier switch weight sounds like it's going to be a problem for you, when it comes to plate mounted Topre switches, I would definitely recommend the 55 if you can deal with the heavier weight because they do feel snappy. They have a great thock sound to them. The sound profile is amazing. Um, and if for change you don't like it, they are a quick resell because people are looking for them all the time. They're out of stock a lot and the demand is fairly high. And again, this is the only board you can get 55 grams in stock right now. Uh, so at the very least, somebody's gonna wanna buy it as a donor board if nothing else. Now, I don't have one here to show you, but I have also tried the 45 gram Real Force board, and I've also tried the Core Master Nova Touch, which is 45 gram. And the 45 gram of the plate felt a little soft and mushy, um, and I didn't really love the sewn profile, particularly myself, which was one of the reasons I was initially 
kind of semi turned off by the 45 gram topris that I had tried and didn't really care for them. Um, the very first topper I had ever tried actually before I got into trying the full boards was just this little key switch tester here uh, which is just mounted to a piece of acrylic and um, it's a 45 gram with a type heaven keycap on it and it's just a very you know this doesn't feel all that bad but it is just a single key so it's hard to make any judgments from just that but when I actually got to try the 45 gram plate mounted boards I didn't really love what I was feeling it felt a little soft and mushy and I really wasn't digging it so that's what led to my initial purchase of the 55 gram plate mounted real force um, and I still do dig it out from time to time but because of the issues aforementioned of the fatigue and the slight pain but more so the fatigue than anything I don't use it for any long periods of time so it's in its box more often than not um, so for that reason I may even end up selling this board in the future just because without being able to use it for long periods of time I find it's more of a hassle to keep taking it out of its box and plugging it in just for some short-term enjoyment personally the other big complaint I have about the board is the cable it is non removable and it's very stiff at least you know in my experience now I do live in a colder area I live in New England so it's cold more times than not here um, so that I'm sure plays into it but it's a very stiff cord and also I don't like the fact you can't at least you can replace it but you have to actually disassemble the board go in and remove it from the internal connector which is kind of a pain um, because this is eventually going to wear out from plugging it in and you know removing it and plugging it in again and again and that's kind of how I do it because I don't leave it hooked up to the computer um, so I myself may end up selling the board down the line so those are kind of my two disappointing things about the 55 gram real force now if you do need the additional keys and a 10 keyless this one definitely does it right uh, where it does have that number pad on the function layer down in here which is very nice um, although if you're not used to where the secondary function layer is and everything you may want to consider the white version as opposed to the black because it did take me quite a bit of time and I'm still not fully used to where everything is on that function layer now enter the happy hacking keyboard this was a board that I had no way to try before I bought it I was going purely on reputation video reviews and word of mouth because I had knew nobody that had one of these boards I could try I asked around to see if anybody I knew locally had one I even asked a friend of mine that works at IBM locally and another friend that works for Hewitt Packard and he didn't know or neither one of them knew anybody within the company that had one locally that I could just try so I had to buy this in a leap of faith and it was kind of a scary leap of faith because as we all know these are not cheap boards and I was a little worried about the 45 gram switch because as I mentioned my earlier not so love of the 45 gram fuel and plate mount well, these are case mounted and I gotta tell you it makes all the difference in the world as far as the sound profile you can definitely hear that thock and that topre kind of iconic sound on the happy hacking keyboard more so than the 45 gram plate mounted in my opinion they also do feel a little bit snappier than the plate mounted they don't feel quite um, as mushy not that the 45 grams on plate are mushy they just feel mushy compared to the 55 gram and the case mounted 45 grams of the happy hacking keyboard um, so that to me was a big win I had the lighter feel of the 45 gram switch with the sound profile I wanted and they didn't feel as mushy so I really liked the feeling right off my other concern was the layout um, as I mentioned I was a big caps lock user so getting used to this being a control key and not being able to swap it to caps lock was a big deal for me uh, but I have since gotten used to it uh, at first I started using sticky keys to treat my shift key like a caps lock and that worked and now I'm actually almost used to just using shift normally which for me is a big change from how I usually type um, so the layout 
really wasn't nearly as bad to get used to as I thought it was going to be. It's actually very intuitive now, and I find now that I have the delete right here switched with the, um, you know, let me unplug this so I can actually show you closer up. I have the delete key right here um, set as my backspace, and now when I use any other keyboard like the RealForce boards, I keep hitting my backslash key as my backspace and have completely lost the muscle memory up here for backspace. And it does feel a, bit, a little bit counterintuitive now to reach up this far for backspace. This feels much more natural um, and it does actually speed up my fixing typos that I make. Um, so I've noticed that's actually helped me in my typing flow quite a bit. Uh, just that one little stupid thing, really, it's kind of funny. Um, and getting used to the control being here has been great for copying and pasting and quick things of that nature. Um, so it's definitely made normal typing, um, I'd say, a little bit faster for me, uh, whereas occasionally I could hit 100 words per minute before, and now I'm really constantly hovering around that 95 to 100 word per minute mark, and which with my weird freaking typing style is pretty decent, I would say. Um, so the layout has actually worked out very well, and I really have fallen in love with it, even though I was very, we'll say, critical of it at first. The other thing, too, as well I was worried about was using this board for gaming. Because let's face it, this is basically your core keyboard right here. This is all your letters and your numbers, escape, etc. On the RealForce board, you're now losing, at least with direct access, all your function row keys, okay, your arrow keys, all your keys over here that you could remap to other you know, functions. Whereas on the Happy Hacking keyboard, you do have to use your function key over here or remap one of the other keys or function key to access your F keys on the number row. All right, and you don't, well, you do have the page up and page down and everything else, uh, but they're also relegated to the secondary function layer row as are the arrow keys if you use them for anything. And I was really worried about that at first, thinking, oh my god, how am I going to get used to this layout? Dear lord. Um, but truth be told, it's actually easier once you get used to it, because now, instead of having to do this, where I'm reaching over and moving farther up or to the side to get to a different key, I'm never moving my hands from this initial row. And because of that, it makes typing a little faster, and more intuitive, um, kind of like when I dumped full-size boards entirely. Um, you know, I always noticed it would kind of hurt and fatigue my hands going all the way over here to access numbers, and it just didn't feel right. And when I made the drop to the 10 keyless, that felt more natural, and even now so, the happy hacking feels even more natural, just keeping your hands within that little area and just getting used to accessing the function for the very rare times you use those keys. And that's kind of what I learned in gaming was I really wasn't using all these function row keys and I wasn't using the arrow keys or these keys nearly as much as I thought it would be. And in fact, there was even a thread I had read somewhere recently, it might have been Reddit, uh, where a lot of Counter-Strike players, professional you know, level players, were swearing by 60% boards. And I kind of have to say I agree. Uh, the extra mousing space is definitely nice, so that makes it more comfortable, and being closer to the keyboard when gaming um, is more ergonomic than, you know, sitting like this with a full-size board, or even this with a TKL, with the 60% of the happy hacking, you're just like this, and it feels much more natural, it's more comfortable, it allows me to stay accurate for longer periods of time because I'm not getting that fatigue. I mean, really, this board has eliminated most any fatigue I have felt at all. Um, unless I'm sitting here for like an entire day off gaming, which quite frankly, who has the time to do that anymore? But it's really worked out very well for both gaming and typing. Uh, so as far as the layout perspective and the board overall, it's really worked out much better than I ever thought it was going to. Uh, also, the other big thing I really prefer over the real force on this, besides the layout and the size, is this. The removable cable, such a, a basic stupid thing that I don't know why they wouldn't have done on the real force board. What I do with the happy hacking keyboard is even a mini USB is going to wear out eventually. It's going to, okay? But 
here is an angled mini USB adapter, okay? If I plug this in to the Happy Hacking keyboard, that just sits like that. So now whenever I need to change cables or unplug it, I don't remove this, I just remove the cable from the adapter so that I'm not wearing down the insertion rating on the actual mini USB port. Instead, all the stress is taken right here at the input of the adapter. So if the adapter wears out, I just unplug the freaking adapter and get another one, of which I already have one right here, already queued up in case this one ever wears out. So to me, that was a great design decision to have the removable cable. I really like that. Um, the USB hub, yeah, kind of useless, a little disappointed by that. You know, it works to put a mouse dongle in, so it's nice for that. So at least it's close by, so you know nothing's really going to be interfering with it being that close. Um, but otherwise, there's so many things that just don't work because they don't get enough power. I almost kind of just pretend it's not there. Um, and I do like the handy little sticker on the back showing you what all the switches do. And the feet are much sturdier than they look. The other nice thing about this is I can use this for travel as well. I might even buy a second one just so I don't have to keep moving this one. It's feather light for what it is. I mean, compared to any of my other, you know, 60% boards, by contrast, I don't have a scale handy, but... Oh, jeez, I don't even know what the heck I did with my poker. Oh, here it is. So... Here's my Poker 3 with Cherry MX Blues. This compared to this, and again, I don't have a scale handy, this feels like it weighs like a tank. Which, don't get me wrong, this feels like it would survive a drop onto concrete and still probably work just fine. Not that the Happy Hacking keyboard isn't built well, because it is. It does feel sturdy. It doesn't have, you know, flex or bend or feel like cheap plastic or anything of that nature. Um, but it is very, very light not having that plate and not having the aluminum case. And as such, it is easy to move around or bring with you wherever you want to take it. Something that this is just, as the real force is too heavy and clunky. And without the removable cable, if you move your board around at all, this is almost a just no, like definite no. Um, so overall, I prefer the Happy Hacking Keyboard Professional 2. And I also prefer the 45 gram case mounted switches by a fairly wide margin if I'm using it for any one extended period of time and prefer the keyboard itself overall. I hope that addressed a lot of the questions that people have when comparing 55 gram to 45 gram switches since these are usually the two boards you see compared the most when making that bit of conversation. Um, and I answered why I personally have come to prefer the board that at first I was a bit critical of and didn't think I was going to like at all. If you have any questions or anything I did not cover in this comparison, please feel free to ask in the comments section down below. And if it's something that I can't just answer in type, um, I'll be happy to do a short video to address any questions people have if it so requires because I know these are not small purchases and you don't just want to buy them unless you're absolutely sure that it's the keyboard for you. As there are only so many Topre options on the market, they're all fairly expensive and you don't want to end up being disappointed with your purchase. But as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, rate, and subscribe. Have a good one, everyone. Oh, and by the way, oneness with cup rubber.